Hi everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. You know, it's never too early to start working in the plant room. Fall, dare I say it, winter, oh, ouch. Hey, they're just around the corner. I'm in the basement in our pool room and um, one of the remaining fish tanks that we have left now is the 75 gallon that my son used to have some fish in. And uh, I've got some red eye uh, tetras in there and I've got some uh, large danios and uh, we also have got some quarries in there, some really pretty quarries and a couple of um, algae eaters. Uh, looking forward to seeing these guys grow up in the tank. So it's kind of a fun place to come on down. All the lights turn down low and we can look at the fish swimming around in the fish tank. So today on the show, we're not gonna actually be spending time, uh, too much time here by the fish tank. We're actually gonna head into the plant room. It is never too early to get started on your plant room because yes, dare I say it, the F and the W word are very, very fastly approaching. And um, you can get caught, um, uh, in, a, in, a, in a lot of trouble, um, it caught left behind um, with a lot of work to do if all of a sudden we have a cold snap and you got to get a whole bunch of trees in protection. So we've got cold frames to think about, but we also have tropicals that will be getting in here and that'll be first. So uh, rainy day today, uh, a lot of thunder came through and it was beautiful for the outside trees. Everything is loving life out there. So today's updates, uh, well, the plant room. So let's head in there and see what we got going with the plant room. As I prepare the plant room this year, one of the things I wanted to do was to update the benches. So I had shared on a previous video that I spray painted the second of two glass tables I got from the neighbor. And so here is the uh, other one. Um, so I have this one on a homemade leftover lumber stand. Uh, let me show you that real quick. I have the new spray painted black um, metal stand with the glass tabletop and down here, I constructed a really wild and crazy two by four um, lift, if you will. I've got four by four posts that were about a foot high each. And so then I wrapped the bottom with some two by fours. I wrapped around the top with uh, some one by sixes. These are leftover deck boards. Two by fours in the bottom, one by sixes up top. And that's just holding the big base in. And it's about a total of about 12 to uh, 15 inches, I think, off the bottom, which raised this up. So when I stand up, it's a really nice working level here on the glass tabletop. I've got one of my boot trays here, which just has all kinds of stuff on it. Part of that organization I'm always trying to do. These were just all over the plant room in various little uh, boxes and little uh, containers. And I've got some shelving over here and uh, it's just sitting here for right now. Got some plants from my parents' house that they, they were uh, having a tough time growing because the cats kept eating them. So I said, hey, you need a plant room. And, and here they are. And uh, my draconia here, I think that's how you pronounce it, uh, dragon tree or the, it's kind of like this palm tree, Dressonia. I never know how to pronounce that tree. Um, eaten by rabbits right here. You can see it just kind of grew up right there. It's just in a regular pot. I haven't bones eyed this or anything. Um, I've got a cutting here from uh, Chef Lara. This is one of my big boot trays, and I have a whole bunch of little trays in here. And so I prepared this this year to put a whole bunch of uh, bonsai soil in here, some recycled bonsai soil. We'll have all of that on here that'll just, um, uh, we'll put all the um, pots on. And it'll hold moisture in here and keep it all nice and humid in here. A couple of uh, aloes that are still struggling to stay alive here. But the big improvement of this table not only being this high is instead of having six lights up above, if you look at past videos, I had all of these park hands, which are going to be in a different location. I'll show you that sometime. Um, I got these uh, lights that were left over from a build. My friend uh, Steve from the Minnesota Bones, I said, hey, Dave, I've got these uh, four, uh, four foot lights and they're all LED lights and so I had some leftover piping and here it is up here a little bit of a swoop up here and I had some leftover industrial kind of uh, shelving piping that I used for a shelf upstairs I put that from side to side and hung the light and I'm able with my little zip tie things here these are actually they're well not zip ties they're made out of metal and the little connectors here and I got this for my shade cloth and never used it and so I can manipulate the height of this based on how uh, I put these little square pegs and I can bring this down lower or bring it back up. And I wired it, um, I loosely wired, I gotta tape this up now and cover it up. 
and I have this old extension that used to be on a car light, and so that comes to here. Here we go. And uh, we plug it in, and we'll have some power. Let's see how it works. So there we go. So we have two LA strips in here. Um, um, none of the plants will be higher than this guy. And uh, we'll have really good, evenly distributed light here. Plus, we have the north-facing window back here. And so that's going to be the new setup uh, for the plants in the plant room instead of that uh, big wooden... Uh, bench that I had. I destroyed it earlier this summer in preparation for table number two. So I'm really excited to have table number two set up. I need a couple more boot trays and because I love these big thick ones and the light is all up and I think it's at a good height. Everything will be about this high maybe up to here for a couple of the trees and we'll get some really good even light here. So there's one um, of the updates of the plant room getting ready. We can never be ready too soon because, you know, I hate to say it, but fall and then uh, winter is just around the corner. Now, I can appreciate how hard that was to hear because I'm a teacher. And so I have to return to school a week from Monday uh, for teacher training and stuff. And then the school's uh, two weeks from Tuesday um, after Labor Day. So summer is winding down. And so I don't get caught with all kinds of stuff to do it was kind of a rainy day today, and I didn't have a tree I was going to work on. And haven't shot a video for a while. I said, hey, let's update the plant room and kind of uh, give the tour and see what we're working on. So this light is looking pretty good. The next update on my plant room is what used to be the closet of my son's bedroom. And it was the closet with the built-in shelf over on this side which had the, the, the plastic wrap around it. It was kind of my greenhouse, my indoor greenhouse. I shifted things around. I got rid of the 40 gallon tank. I got rid of the 20 gallon tank because you know what? Push comes to shove. I have a few more trees than fish and all the fish, goldfish, big ones are gonna be outside in the pond again for year two in the frozen pond. I've got all the de-icer set up last year. It worked just fine. So we're gonna put all the goldfish out there. I didn't need these pot, uh, fish tanks anymore and everything stays relatively humid down here and I don't wanna get it too humid and have any uh, mold issues. There was some mold on the window back there that I did clean up this summer and got it really nice and sparkling. Nothing in here, but you know, I was on that cusp of being maybe just a little too moist, uh, but the plants do love it, of course. Uh, but I won't be too dry in here, for sure. I can always hang, I can put the doors back on, hang a, hang a curtain on here, but then that, of course, will attract that uh, moisture as well. So I like all the newly painted walls the painted ceiling. This shelf I put this way so I can walk into the trees and see everything. Plus the light switches right here was always hard to get at. Yeah, not much light, but it's a little bit. And I put the A-frame or the half A-frame fish tank stand and I set it up already. And so I believe if I go ahead and plug into some power and turn on the switch to say on, there we go. Voila! We have our six par cans from over there are nicely placed over here. So I have one of my thick boot trays with all these little extra trays that you get from the plastic training pots that I never use. I'm going to put bonsai soil in there, um, recycled bonsai soil. I've been cleaning it all. I'm going to put recycled bonsai soil in every one of these pots and then the, then the trees will just be able to sit here and get all together and we got light only about six to eight inches above the tree. Some of them will come real up high. We got three lights on top and I've got three lights shining down below and I got the same thing down below with the tray and the little uh, pot trays uh, inside the tray. And so I'm going to keep a lot of those, uh, uh, the bonsai soil and all those little trays to keep it moist longer. Um, so all the water drains through, it'll stay in those rocks and it'll hover around those trees and create some good moisture. So that shelf is all set. Should be able to get a ton of trees on um, there. And then back here, I'm, I'm a little shy of my really nice big boot trays. I have to go and see if my box store has them. I'd love to get them on, on sale. This is one of those things, remember, when you find something, get it. They were on sale one day for $6.95 or something like that. Ridiculous. And that's when I made my two boot tray bonsai pots. $6.95. They're $9.95 at least, and usually in the teens per. And so I got them for over half price one day, and I bought a couple. I should have bought like all 10 of them that they had. So we have some uh, other uh, boot trays here, not as big. We're going to get the big ones, and they're going to be on this shelf and this shelf. 
and all of those uh, lights will be turned on. And I've got the little fan here. I think I'm going to get a second fan for down here. I might get a third fan for over here, and they're going to go on that every uh, about 15 minutes an hour cycle. Uh, through the day at hours where they're just going to cycle the air in here, which will be really nice. So if I get a, a fan going this way and a fan going this way and one down here, the air will hopefully go that way just a little bit. So the closet is clean, it's pretty sparkly still, and it is ready for plants. So the plant room is uh, making some good progress. The next order of business is my pots. Now, um, hello to Gramps, by the way. Gramps is still hanging up in the plant room, ready for some creative stuff this winter. And I, I have to do something with these pots. So I usually keep the pots on the back shelf right here. Oh, here's my Sarah Rayner pot, my new one this year, that kind of uh, mustardy yellow one. Really loving that one. Um, I, I put my pots in here, so I, I cleaned out the shelf. I took everything out. Some of these pots still have soil in them, just little remnants of soil and dirt, and I haven't used even some of these, uh, like my other serrator pot here. It's not even been used yet. There's the big SR in the back, so another beautiful pot. You can tell I'm kind of uh, liking her, um, kind of these yellow themes, mustard yellow and light colors. Um, so I've got her two pots here. So those are clean, and they fit on the shelf beautifully. Um, and so I'm going to do some stacking of some uh, bonsai pots, but I have to make sure too that I want to do a little clean because there's nothing uh, worse than when you want a pot and it's dirty, um, you have to go clean it then. And so now, as I'm getting ready for storage for the fall and winter months, let's clean all the pots, let's put all the pots here, and then they'll be ready when I'm ready for that next repot, whether it's a tropical later on this winter or in the spring, one of my deciduous or conifer trees. We'll get them into some of these pots. So, a couple of them are clean and haven't been used. Many of them have had something in them, and we're just going to give them a gentle, uh, gentle cleaning. General cleaning. So, I have a bucket of water here and a rag, and we're literally going to just dunk some of these pots into the water, and uh, we're going to get them uh, cleaned up a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead and grab one. What should we start with? Um, how about this one right here? This is a fun uh, 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 six-sided pot that I used. I had my um, Sabina juniper in here, and it, uh, it uh, passed away last two years ago now. I didn't have it all this year. So we're just going to go ahead and give this a dunk. Oh, big splash. And then we're going to shake it around in here a little bit. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to give it a little wash. So, I'm just going to use water on the pots for right now, kind of getting rid of some of the uh, soil that might have been in there, that was left in there. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do that, we'll dunk it a couple of times, and that's basically all we're going to do with the pots today. Um, I'm not going to worry about giving them any kind of sheen. Um, sometimes, uh, if you're getting ready with a show pot, people are going to put... Uh, maybe a little bit of olive oil or uh, just a cooking oil of some sort or um, uh, whatever oil that you have around the house that will just give it a little bit of that sheen and polish it up a little bit for a show. So I'm not going to worry about that today. Today we're just going to go ahead and get this nice and clean. So we able to get most of the dirt off of there and um, I've got uh, a drainage screen it looks like it's still viable. Let's go ahead and salvage that. And if I have to repair it next year, I can. So we'll put that back in there. And now that one is ready. So now all I need is a towel and we'll keep on cleaning. I have my garbage can here. Dump out the soil, dunk it into the water, and let's get some pots cleaned. thing about cleaning your pot collection is I cleaned out some of the dirt on this one when I pulled it up I didn't even remember it was my Sarah Rayner pot that I got last year I love this pot with uh, the real nice dark accents on here and uh, yeah now it's all cleaned up and ready to go as well I've had 
one tree in this pot right here, and this is just a really nice old pot and uh, has some really nice little uh, delicate texture here on the feet. Uh, it's a nice oval shape. It's kind of wider, so it's not even not quite rounded off as much as like, something like this. Of course, that's a really oval pot. Um, so it's got some width to it. Just a really nice, super shallow pot. So uh, the right tree has to go in here, and I just haven't had it, and I can't wait to get something in this one because I just think it's a really cool pot. Yeah, I think it's time for a new bucket of water. of the pots I just kind of threw them in here but uh, now is the time where we're going to kind of give them a little bit of rhyme and reason and um, you know watching videos in the past and going to see Sarah Rayner's pots uh, up close and personal uh, seeing Bjorn Bjornholm or um, even Ryan Neal when he goes and grabs that pot for that really cool repot on his channel um, they always go into their their pot section their pottery section and they have all these pots with a bunch of wood uh, Shims. They're probably not shims, but I've got shims. You can never have too many shims laying around your house. And here we go. We're going to put these in some kind of order so we will protect them from any uh, scars, um, um, bangs, bruises, that kind of thing. Okay. So I would like all my big ones to be uh, together. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and on the right here, I'm going to put my bigger pots, my nicer pots, and they're going to go down the bottom. So this one fits in there really nice. This one sticks out just a little bit. Now, I could put these little pots inside here, but then they will be hidden from view, and I don't want to do that completely. So we're going to go ahead and put the old shim on here. These shims are not quite long enough for some of these wider pots, but I think if that goes here, and this is long enough, look at there. We have our, we have our bonsai pot system. Let's do it this way so they're bending the same way. And now we have right there we have a shim system all right we get a shim there we get a shim here let's see if we have another one that's long enough to fit there maybe my other sarah rainer pot huh oh, it's a little too short so here's what we are going to do i think what we'll do is we're going to put this pot in the sarah rainer pot because it sits up high and then we will put some shims on here, and then we will put my other Sarah Rayner pot right there. So I got Sarah Rayner and Sarah Rayner right there. everything I got a shim left over hmm, where can I put my shim right there uh, how about that there we go so we are locked and loaded with a whole bunch of pots we got the big ovals over here some round and some odd shapes over here some rectangles and a couple of ovals left over here you know actually if we just keep the ovals with the oval there and that one fits Maybe we can have one more right there and balance that one there. Oh, it's a little precarious now. We're shaking there. We're going to have to get some new shims and bigger shims. We've got these unique pots here. Let's do this and that. And there we go. So now we have all of our pots on the shelf. So it's kind of a nice display. And if I'm ever coming in here to look for a pot, it's all ready for me to go. So nothing like preparation, right? Getting ready for when you need what you need. All my other plastic training pots are outside. And if I find any more ceramic, we'll clean them up and we'll put them in here to add to the plant room pot shelf. My last update or info session about the plant room is the fish tank pot. So the Bonesai fish tank pot 
had a few issues way back in the springtime and I sprung a leak. So let's reveal the fish tank pot for you here. So there we have the fish tank pot. We had lost this tree, so I cut back some branches and left the death of that tree there. And as you can see, the forest has really thickened up. The premnas are, uh, they, they shot way out. So we have to cut these all the way back. And so I'm gonna go ahead and, and cut some of the tree back. Um, and then what I have to do is fix the fish tank pot. So what I discovered was this side over here, the, uh, the pond liner in here was, uh, broke loose a little bit. There's a little bit of a weak spot over here. And so the silicone lost its grip to the, to the plexiglass here and we had, a, we had a leak and it came down to about here. So we, we lost the fish tank. So at the time I took the quarries that were in here and put them back in the other fish tank um, that we had around and uh, any fish that were still alive, I went ahead and, and uh, uh, put them into the fish to other fish tanks. So we've had some destruction and some rocks move away. It's kind of messy right now, but the plants are doing okay. We have had some issues with these little white flies that uh, continue to love the plants down here when they're down here. And right now, just the prema. I just gave them some, um, some horticultural oil and uh, treated them. And uh, now what we're going to do, though, is we're going to go ahead and we're going to trim the forest. And that's all we're going to do today. We're going to trim the forest up, get these trees uh, in, a, in a nice new shape. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to work on fixing the fish tank next time. So we'll put a little silicone in here, um, we'll re-adhere uh, everything, and then we'll do our water tests and we'll hope for the best. But for today, let's go ahead and get the clippers out and let's give this mammoth forest of crazy growth a much shorter compact look and we'll set it up for the new growing season which will end up being the late fall and winter here. Um, the light's not on right now because the timer went off but that's okay the vision the, the visual will be a little over modulated for you all. So let's get the scissors and let's give this one a haircut. So we have our canvas here which is uh, for those new to the channel uh, this is remnants of the uh, North Superior hiking trail that my son and I have gone on many times and one of our favorite hikes is the Cascade River. If you're ever in northern Minnesota and the North Shore, you go up past Duluth into the Superior hiking trail, check out the Cascade River. A lot of deep gorges and riverways and so this was my image of the rocks and the cliffs and I put some Premna on here because we had had some damaged Premna from critters uh, for the workshop trees. And so I ended up doing some air layering, keeping all my secondary and small trees from those air layers and cuttings, and uh, we put them into the bonsai tank. Now, incidentally, if you want to see the creation of this fish uh, tank bonsai pot contraption, uh, go ahead and check the playlist uh, for this guy. Uh, there's a lot of episodes. Uh, we give a good summary, though, in episode number 15. Uh, but if you want to see how I put this together, it's pretty fun. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and start with this front tree. As we look at this tree, we don't like things looking at us, right? And poking us in the eye. And oh my gosh, there's all kinds of craziness here. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to do some trimming here. We're going to get this one down to size. We're going to get this one down to size. And uh, there's some big leaves. One thing I've discovered about the premnas. Um, the premnas will start to grow in a really odd shape and they'll like go completely backwards like this one right here. So this is shooting back inside and we don't want that. Um, and so if you catch it early with the direction of the leaves for directional pruning, you can avoid that for uh, future growth. If I just leave that stub there, maybe some will start to grow back uh, towards the front here. I'm just going to cut some of these really, really back far. And uh, we're going to see if this one's growing a really weird direction but there's one right back here. This one's super crooked again growing backwards. I don't want that. Let's shorten this one to the leaf. You'll notice a lot of leaves falling off here. That's again because of uh, some of the bug infestation I believe. Um, and I did do a recent uh, um, again spraying and I think we'll be good and this will start to grow out um, in the plant. Look at this one right here growing out about it's good six inches. We're going to cut it back to those buds right here to the bud right there. We'll cut off the old point. This is growing way down in the bottom here. I'm going to cut that off. Let's cut this to here and hope that grows up. We're going to cut this down here. We got a lot of branches on the other trees trying to interfere. 
We'll cut this down to here. We got some buds ready to shoot there. So we're just cutting a lot of this back. We're going to see where that's going to grow next year. Or, or, or this, I should say, this winter in the plant room, right? Okay. Now the premnas outside in the yard are love and life. They are doing very, very well. I just print, uh, pruned some of those today. So we're just going to make all of these shorter, promote growth to a different direction. This one comes back, swooping back towards the uh, front there. So we're going to make this shorter, this one shorter. Actually, it's growing back in a weird direction. Let's completely cut it out. So we got some weird movement to this tree, which is kind of fun. We're just going to see where it's going to go. I'm not quite sure what tree this Premna is emul emulating, emulating, simulating from the North Shore. Maybe uh, the leaves are kind of more like an elm tree. So maybe like an elm in the forest in northern Minnesota. And again, this is growing backwards, so I'm just going to cut it to hopefully have those ones grow up. We're going to give this a really good haircut here. Getting ready for this next push of growth. I'm going to cut this branch back here because it, it, look at that. Look at all that weird growth. We got branches this way, this way, this way. Um, we got some new buds right here and here that want to grow right where that cut point was. We're going to cut this whole big back section off right here. This back section off right here. It's going back to the other trees. This one's circling around. We're just going to cut it shorter. Buds down to there, buds down to there, cut that tip off. Yeah, you know, like this one right here. This grows by my scissors and grows towards the, the crick over here. This one's curving back from the front way up here. Oh my gosh, that's just a weird direction. This one's curving around the back too. We'll cut that one off. And there we go. We're going to see what this tree does with this new uh, short, short haircut. Cutting way down to these lower level. All right. So it's kind of got this fun movement over here, and then we'll just let these uh, branches uh, branch out, divide a little bit more, and we'll see what happens in the next push of growth. So that's just that tree right there. We cut off a fair amount. Now we've got these trees back here that are leaning kind of a funky way. This one, let's cut off this branch going back here. We're going to cut shorter. We're going to cut shorter. Shorter. This one's growing inside. We'll cut it real short and see what happens in this next growth pattern. This down here has a new branch growing below an old branch. Let's keep the, let's keep the new growth. Since it's thriving, cut this shorter, cut this shorter and shorter. And just we'll see what this tree does here. Actually, there's some growth back here. We're going to go ahead and cut this right here and we'll leave this nice and short. There you go. Not much left of that one. This one has grown up a sucker tree right here. You see that? Look at that right there. We have a new sucker growing up. We'll cut that shorter. That leaf's going to fall off. We'll cut this shorter. This one's coming at us in a really weird design. So if you don't trim, look at this one right here. That's about a foot of growth, 8 to uh, 10 inches for sure. We're going to cut the whole thing off right there. Look at that. That's all new growth in the plant room. This one's growing down in a really weird direction, but I'm going to keep some of it and probably cut the one up here because that's growing too much in a weird direction. This is just super long, super long and curvy in a very bizarre direction. We trim. We take off, so like right here, I don't know if this is be able to see on the, oh, did I just break that one off? I just broke that one off. Let's cut it off. So this branch right here was growing out this way, but look at the leaves they are pointing this way. And sometimes that or that branch, those leaves, those will take off and grow like crazy. That's why these, you see these trees growing in a whole different light, uh, all, all over the place. I uh, cut that one off. I think we need to cut this off. Those are fighting each other. And let's cut that back right there. Now those are free to grow. All right. Sorry. I saw some things I kind of missed. Yeah. Yeah. So like all these branches right here, all these leaves rather, are growing that way. So some of them, 
might take off and be a huge branch if you don't uh, prune them early and put the energy towards the leaves that are maybe going in the other direction. So uh, you can be careful with that uh, and prune. Now these are going out this way. Maybe it'll grow out a different direction. So here's this small tree back here. This one we've cut way back. We're still cutting way back. I'm gonna cut this one shorter. This has kind of a nub at the tip here. We're gonna cut that off, maybe get a new leader. Let's cut that off right there. Now look at that, there's a, there's a branch way down low here. There's a branch down here we'll cut off. We've got this sucker, so we'll keep it as a twin trunk. This one moved a little bit with uh, bumps and bruises. We can put a rock there. Gonna put a rock on that one too. Put a rock there and hold that up a little bit more. We'll worry about that later. So now that one's all cut up really super short. So this is the tree that was wilted back in the series, the early series of this video. This tree was wilted, but this branch has grown from the back one, so let's just cut that off. And now look at all the growth on this one. So it survived. It did just fine. We're going to cut some down leaves here. All right, there we go. We have a growth in the back you can't see. I'll just cut that off. This leaf's growing in a really weird direction, so I want that off and this off. Let's hope for more forward growth. Let's cut this back one off as well. Nope, I just cut that off completely. My bad. We're going to leave this one in the back, but shorter. Leave this in the back, but shorter. Shorter. There's a lot of new growth at the tip of this tree. So let's cut off. Let's cut off the chunk, and we'll leave this short for some new growth. There we go. So this one in the back, pretty solid in the ground there, good. And then the one back here, we can cut off again, we can make shorter. There's buds growing everywhere down below. like the way that was growing. There we go. Got a little stub of a tree back there, but that's how they started. These were super skinny cuttings. These were all cuttings from one of my Premnas. This, uh, one of them was an air layer. This one right here was the bottom of an air layer. So let's move over to that right side. If I move this rock right here, this is a stump right here, a twin trunk stump that we air layered and this twin trunk stump shut up all of these suckers. So these down here are trees from a sucker. Five of them. This one's really getting pretty thick right here. And so, I'm going to go ahead and make this uh, a group of five that can grow. Cut off some of this lower growth. So we can see some trunk. Whoops, we're bumping our dead tree there. This one's getting shaded out and not doing a whole lot because it's on the inside. Let's get rid of that. We cut that short and that short. And cut this one off. Oops, I keep bumping the dead one. And we'll go shorter on here with some back budding here. Back budding there. Shorter. Shorter. I think I will cut that one back to there. Shorter. Some new buds below my scissor cuts here. Everywhere I'm cutting, I'm seeing buds that are uh, forming. There's an inside one that probably won't grow very well, maybe long term. An old cut point right there, some new uh, new growth right there. Let's go down to those buds. Let's go down to those buds. This is the back tree. Got some new buds growing really low. These low ones back here, we'll just let some of those take off. I'm not too worried about uh, the style of this forest right now with this planting. I gotta fix the fish pot, the fish tank pot thing. <laughs> All right.
right, got my little fisher guy here who's still got his fish on. So we just demolished about 90% of the foliage, almost to complete the foliation of our forest. And so there is the after look of our fish tank pot. We've got to do some sealing now right down in here. So I'm going to clean up all the leaves. The carnage is down inside the river. Jay, look where the carnage is. Right down in there. Look at that. Carnage. Nice. All right. That's all we're going to do for today. I just wanted to trim up these uh, trees. Um, we'll give them a water in the next couple of days because I just watered them yesterday. And uh, the light will come through and all of these branches will have all this light, this artificial light that's a really big light box up there. Produces a lot of good light and um, makes things grow really well down here. They'd love it outside, of course, but uh, this fish pot tank is a little too heavy. I've been meaning to get to this forest uh, for a long time. I looked at it and I said, oh, I really got to get down here and do this. But the plant room is coming together. We got the new bench over here, painted the glass top. We need some more food trays. The light is all ready to go. Over here in the closet, we've got those uh, shelving systems all set and ready to go. We need a couple more fans, a couple more boot trays, and uh, plants will be going on there. I've got my work table right here with my original uh, black table with the white top, so I could do some work here for videos this winter. Grant's still over my right shoulder as we do some creative work with him as inspiration. Um, shout out to my mom again. I haven't said hi to mom in a long time. I know she's been watching. And, um, well, and this, um, it's kind of a mess. It really, truly is. But it's been a fun project. It's an ongoing project. And it was one that I let go, right? The plants are doing well, but the fish tank part is a little sloppy. So we've got some rocks around the border here. We're going to clean up this mess. We're going to tidy things up. We're going to silicone this tank again, try to put some water in there, and we can see if we can get a couple of fish swimming there uh, by this winter time. So it's still going to be a really fun challenge and a fun project as always. Hey, thanks for sticking around. A little update show on the plant room. I got a new surprise tree today from an old friend back in high school. Uh, I was in contact with a friend from high school recently. We talked and then and, and got, got caught up a little bit. I got a new tree that it was a little bit too hard for her to care for. And she's been watching the channel and she said, Hey Dave, would you like this tree? And I said, yes, before I think she finished her sentence. That's coming up on a future show. In the meantime, though, hey, take care of you. Take care of your bonsai. And we're going to catch you very soon on the next one.